Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're looking at Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. So if you haven't already gotten your Bible there, go ahead and do that. Just to preview for today, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to do that thing where I ask you to read on your own and ponder. Instead, this is mostly going to be teaching just because the logic of this passage is something that I want to pick apart for you. And I just want you to show you how this passage works together because it's very important. And once I do that, there's not going to be much left for you to think about. So what we'll do is I'll explain the passage and then I'll leave you with thoughts to think about. So first, before we get to the passage itself, let's talk about what's happened. Remember in chapter 2, verses 8 through 23, Paul has been talking about the sufficiency of Christ over against worldly teachings. There were these false teachers who claimed that they could teach you how to really get closer to God, but Paul wanted to show the Colossian believers and us that all we need to have right relationship with God is Christ, to have faith in him, to be made one with him, and most importantly, to have new life because of him. And this passage that we're going into is the beginning of another big section. From chapter 3, verse 1, until chapter 4, verse 1, Paul is talking about, well, how do you live out that new life that you have in Christ? So chapter 3, verse 1 to chapter 4, verse 1 is very practical, and we're going to spend a couple of sessions looking through this big chunk. So let's take apart the logic. First, when we see in chapter 3, verse 1, that Paul says, if then you've been raised with Christ, he's pointing back to what he has already said in chapter 2, verse 12, when he says, you've been raised with Christ. This is something that's happened to every believer. When we come to faith, we are made one with Christ. Everything that happened to him happened to us. So he died, we died with him spiritually. He rose again, we also rose again, and now we have new life. And then in verses 1 and 2, Paul says, seek the things that are above and set your mind on things that are above. This is another one of those places where Paul is saying the same thing in two different ways. These are parallel. They essentially say the same thing. As believers, we need to pursue heavenly things, things that are from above where Christ is. We need to set our minds on, think on, focus on those things rather than the things that are below, which means things on earth. And this is really Paul building on Jesus' teaching in Matthew 6.33 when he says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then in verse 3, Paul gives the reason why we should set our mind on things above. Why we should seek the things that are in heaven. And it's because your earthly life is done. When you were raised with Christ, it means that you've left everything on earth behind. And more than just leaving things behind, you've been given better things. You've been given heaven. You've been given the promise of eternity. These are things that will never fade, things that can never be taken away from you, things that won't ever depreciate, that won't lose their value, whereas everything else on earth does. But now we have to ask, well, how does this actually play out practically? Because the fact of the matter is you have a life, you have things to do, you have class, you have work, you have stuff, right? So how do we live out this passage, Colossians 3, while also being responsible human beings. Because I don't think that Paul is saying, don't be a responsible human being. And I would say maybe the easiest way to explain it practically is to say that it's a matter of priority. It's what you care about most. It's that while you take care of everything that you have to do, while you become a responsible human being and do well in school and do all that kind of stuff, you recognize and you remember that it's not the most important thing in the world. You have the right perspective on it. Because the right perspective is, this is what God has given you to steward, to take care of. But at the same time, as a steward, you recognize that you're serving someone greater. You're serving a greater purpose, right? It's not just about you and the thing that you have to do. So keeping this perspective on where school should be and the other things that you have should be in your life compared to God and compared to eternal things, that is essentially the easiest way to put this into practice. And the way that that will impact you, a lot of it has to do with your attitude. You'll find that you don't need to panic when things don't work out well for you at school or at whatever you're doing. You'll find that you don't need to be anxious about these things. And Really, knowing that your eternity is secure helps you be secure in this life as well. But it does free you to work hard without being unnecessarily stressed. So that's just one practical way that this passage could influence your life. I would encourage you to pray about it and think about it for yourself and ask God to help you seek the things that are above. I hope that was helpful. I'll see you next time.